by It's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Just a little commentary here on Aaron Hernandez. As the evidence rolls out, as we learn that Aaron Hernandez was with several guys that night, right? Even the car ride where he's with the um, murder victim, they're in the car with other guys. Right? As we learn that there is a trail of evidence. In other words, we don't have to speculate about a link between Aaron Hernandez and the murder victim. We now know that the guys uh, were texting each other that night. Literally, you know, within the hours leading up to the murder. Right? We know that the car that they were in was a car that was rented by Aaron Hernandez. People are now looking into his past and they're seeing a series of incidents involving Aaron Hernandez, including an incident when Aaron Hernandez was 17 in a bar uh, at college and apparently the bar dared ask him to pay for his drinks. Apparently that led to some altercation outside where according to at least some reports um, one of the guys ended up with a busted eardrum and contended that he had been hit by Aaron Hernandez. Right? And so the question has to be asked especially since now the police have already found Aaron Hernandez's secret apartment and of course the um, police investigation uncovered situations where for example Aaron Hernandez's girlfriend who seems to have been completely clueless told the police certain things about the victim before suddenly shutting it down um, investigating officers believe apparently that Aaron Hernandez told her to stop talking in other words this crime as premeditated as it was, and let's remember, the murder victim is shot in the back of the head, right, in a deserted area that apparently the car is in for just a few minutes. In other words, these guys didn't go into that area and hang out at all. They drive in, a few minutes later they drive out, leaving behind the dead body, right? Apparently, as premeditated as this crime was, not a lot of thought was put into covering it up. In fact, we know that after things happen, that's when Aaron Hernandez destroys, allegedly, his security system at his house. And even with the security system being destroyed, apparently there are images of Aaron Hernandez with a firearm. Right? And so I've talked to some friends and, you know, the feeling is, wow, how could a guy be this sloppy? Now, let me just say, you know, uh, back in the day, and I'm talking about the 1980s, a decade far more out of control than any of us want to admit today. Right? I'm sure there are a lot of parents watching this video thinking, wow, if my kid only knew how ridiculous the 1980s were. Back in the day, as Chris Rock talks about, an era when crack just appeared, right? Back in the day, I went away to college. And when I came back, guys I used to hang out with suddenly were wearing very expensive clothes. I ran into a friend of mine, right? I'd known this guy for years, right? And of course, while we were talking, people were coming up to us. And, um, you know, he was just going about his business. People were giving him a lot of money, right? It was then that I understood that I not only knew a crack dealer well, but I actually knew the crack dealer in the area. In fact, we were right in front of a crack house. Now you need to understand the mindset of young guys in their late teens and early twenties. These guys are clueless.
George Foreman, former heavyweight champion, talks about how he was in, I believe it was the Fifth Ward of Houston, and he had robbed somebody, right? Then, of course, the cops came around. Apparently, there was a siren or something like that. And his friend had to tell him, hey, you need to hide. Foreman didn't even know to hide. Foreman was so unprepared that according to Foreman, he had to run and hide under a car or something like that, right? He didn't even have an escape plan, right? Why? Because he was young and he just thought, hey, this is, this is a way of life. You know, some guy's slipping. I take his money. What's the big deal? Well, I'm just telling you, you know, Aaron Hernandez, we think of him as some older guy. Right? We uh, think of him as some seasoned crook. Some guy who should understand that as a multi-million dollar football player with a $40 million you know, salary contract on one of the marquee teams in the National Football League, right? a team that made the AFC Championship game last year, a team that rules the roost in the AFC East, and has for several years, right? We would expect this guy, especially after a college career at one of the premier college football programs, Florida, right? With Urban Meyer back then. We would expect this guy to have more common sense than to leave an obvious trail that goes right to his front door from the murder victim. But I'm just here to tell you, after having hung out with thugs for lengthy periods of time, right? I'm just here to tell you that when you're young and inexperienced, you're not dotting the I's or crossing the T's, right? Many of these guys aren't even thinking about what happened to the gangsters in their neighborhood when they turned 30 and 35 and 40 Right? No one wants to think about the number of guys who are in jail or in drug rehab, have disappeared from the neighborhood, no one knows what happened to them, etc., etc. Right? Back in my neighborhood, I mean, you'd hear a guy was a felon. And it was almost like saying that he had, you know, a PhD. You know, that meant that this guy was, you know, tough enough to fight the system and actually earn his felony. Right? I'm just, you know, I know it sounds ridiculous, but that was the mindset, you know, back then. Aaron Hernandez clearly is a guy today who didn't have the big picture, not even in the slightest, right? He's one of the best interviews I've ever heard any professional athlete be. Right? I've heard Aaron Hernandez in, in a few interviews. As I have said here online, he was one of my fantasy football tight ends. Right? I was actually thinking about keeping Aaron Hernandez in a keeper league in which I'm involved. Right? I thought the guy was in a great situation with a great quarterback on a team that uses tight ends. Right? But he didn't get it. Not even close. When you're young, you're foolish enough to believe that if you do something with your homeboys, no one's going to talk to the police. Why? Because everyone's down with the program. Right? Also, it's like the future doesn't matter. So you're doing crazy things. We saw it in Columbine and all these school shootings. You're doing crazy things. You're ringing the bell in such a way that you can't unring the bell, right? So Aaron Hernandez, let's get real here. If I had to place a bet, it would be that Aaron Hernandez, even if he beats the criminal prosecution, and I don't see how he can, but even if he beats the criminal prosecution, even if some jury, for whatever reason, is unable to convict him. And even if he's retried, as he likely would be, as a high profile defendant with a lot of evidence that looks 
conclusive, right? Even if he's retried and he beats the retry, I don't think Aaron Hernandez plays another down in the National Football League for at least the next seven or eight years, right? Understand, whatever is happening criminally in the criminal justice system, the NFL is a private jurisdiction, right? Roger Goodell would be able to look at the facts, not just this incident, but also the fact that Aaron Hernandez shot out a friend's eye earlier. And he would, of course, have to make a determination as to whether Aaron Hernandez, who apparently slammed his door in the cop's face when told that someone had been murdered, without even asking who the murder victim was or why they were talking to him about some murder. Right? Roger Goodell would have to make a determination on whether Aaron Hernandez's actions that night cast a negative light on the league. Now, if you're an employer, just imagine if an employee was involved in these facts, right? Possible homicide, possible obstruction of a criminal investigation, right? Smash cell phone, smash security system. The last vehicle the murder victim was in was a car rented by your employee. And guess what? At least according to one other person there, your employee was in the car too. And guess what? Guns are involved. And guess what? The police may have located some firearms in your employee's second apartment. Right? These are the kind of facts that quite frankly would lead to a multi-year suspension from the National Football League. And even if it didn't lead to a suspension, what National Football League team is going to leap at the opportunity to sign this guy, right? They might not, ever. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me just say, too, that people need to realize that there's something called felony murder. If you get the impression, and keep in mind, some reports now have Rodriguez as being the trigger man, right? Let me just tell you that given the fact that the prosecution has been able to quickly obtain search warrants, and given the fact that some of the guys charged with this crime have criminal records and have an incentive to drop dime on co-conspirators in order to shorten possible prison sentences, right? I believe it's a safe assumption to think that somebody here is talking to the police, right? We know Aaron Hernandez didn't call up the cops and say, you know what, here's where my second apartment is, right? Somehow the cops got to that second apartment. Someone is talking. Now Hernandez doesn't have to be the trigger man to be convicted of first degree murder. Let's figure out the law. Right? If he pays someone to kill the murder victim and the murder victim gets killed or if he's in the process of committing a violent felony you know, they, they agree to take this guy to where the body was found, right? To kill him, right? If he's there and he's taking actions, and here it's obvious that actions were taken, right? They're in a car that Hernandez rented. If he's taking actions toward that goal and the conspiracy works and the guy actually gets murdered in cold blood, Aaron Hernandez could be found guilty of first-degree murder. Also, throw out any idea of manslaughter, right? Manslaughter happens when there's some kind of fight and people don't have a chance to think, 
right? And a gun goes off and the person gets shot in the face or the chest or something like that. Right here, this murder victim was shot in the back of the head. Good luck making any argument about self-defense. So I think Hernandez is finished criminally. We'll see how it plays out. Just one man's opinion, right? I think he's finished criminally. But certainly, in the private jurisdiction of the National Football League, I don't think he has a hope there either, even if he beats the criminal charges. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.